Hey everybody and welcome back. <coughs> Pardon me. Well it's Thursday already because this has been a really busy week so not sure how much we'll get done. <coughs> I got a frog in my throat again. Um, yes, Wednesday was our day to go into sort of uh, down at the town and do all sorts of stuff. Tuesday actually was a test day for my one of my factory riders. Bob came because he wanted to do some stuff to the uh, brakes. Uh, I think they're 10 times better than any of the brakes, but you know, these people who know disc brakes and things want stuff to be right. So he came up and did that. And we also lightened the clutch up a little bit. And you may remember the clutch has six springs, three heavy duty ones and three lighter ones. So we tried first off with three light, or the three, just the three light ones, you know, gonna, work around this and took it out for a ride didn't slip at all clutch pull is a lot lighter again it's more because bob rides modern bikes and uh, honda reflex so he just i said to him it's an enfield don't touch the clutch but anyway you know he's riding it so we set it up the way he wanted it so that worked out well and uh, a little fiddling with the car because it had a fast idle Actually, I ended up putting a bigger uh, pilot jet in and that really smoothed it out and it was nice. So that was good. And also, uh, the Triumph. Now, one of the reasons I don't like Triumphs, I've only ever had one, which was a, what, 68, I think, Bonneville, is to me that the shakiest of all the British twins. And the Triumph Auto was shaking a bit. In fact, it cracked a couple of the welds on the exhaust. So Chris had brought it over and I thought, well, rather than just fixing these, let's rubber mount it. So that meant I had to change the shape slightly because you may remember it was a very close fit in everything. And I thought, well, it's no good being, you know, 16th of an inch spacing when everything's rigid, if it's gonna be able to shake. So I had to, so that took me a lot of time actually. It was one of those jobs that every time I did a little bit, it was, oh, now it touches here, now it's, so anyway, Long story short, it's Thursday, so we've got today and uh, Saturday. Anything else happening? We've actually got nice weather, which is why I've just got a t-shirt. Here's a lorry. Oh, I just ordered a couple of parts for my bead blaster. And one part was on back order. And I just got an email today to say, It'll be here in November. There you go. So what we're gonna to do today is we are gonna make up our exhaust because I got, we've got some alloy tube, same size, and uh, I've got some stiff rubber, which is actually radiator hose with the uh, sort of nylon thread in it to make this. So. We'll do that, we'll see, I'm thinking of making an airbox rather than putting a pod type filter on because I want to twiddle around with this and it might be easier, oh, traffic, it might be easier to make an airbox and connect that up. I mean, I did that with the Enfield, didn't do it with the Triumph, didn't do it with my Enfield, but I think we will with this. So I've got some more. Uh, one of these quarter inch BSF screws. I went around and measured everything I needed for the cases. So they're all, they arrived. And some 5 16th BSF Allen bolts. I think they're one inch, three quarter inch, something like that. To actually mount this manifold. So let me gather all the bits together. And since I got a comments that people enjoyed watching the machining, we'll, uh, well, but they're off. We will actually show you the little bit of a process to make a stub manifold. A stub manifold. All right, so let's do that. Right, so I hope I didn't confuse you too much a minute ago when I said we were going to do the exhaust. Should have said the inlet. Okay, so here we've got everything we need. Piece of 3 16th, I'm going to make it out of 3 16th uh, alloy. That's just as a guide, that's the stand thing, so that's big enough. Our piece of tube, 
which is the same size as this inch and a half uh, a couple of 5 16th BSF Allen bolts and our rubber tube so let me go I've already marked a center line in this let me go and put it in the mill all right now there's virtually no way of me doing this without getting in the way a little bit but I've set it up so you can see the uh, DRO and the drill so what I've done is I've got it marked set ready on where are if you like this hole here set that to zero so what we're going to do is we're going to drill this we're going to move over two inches which is the hole spacing drill another 5 16 hole move back an inch which will be the center of this and then we'll change over to the hole saw and do our hole in the center all right so here we go back an inch I've already got the uh, the Y axis got so I'll lock that and I'm going to change this to the hole saw. Alright, now we'll do the hole. Slow that down a bit.
Kind of had to wait ages to start this, the, the video. How many trucks have gone past? See, I'm getting bilingual. All right, so there's that cut, and it just struck me I shouldn't have cut it this size. I should have made it much wider so that when I did the welding, because that's going to go in there, I had more to weld onto, and then I could have shaped it. Oh well, anyway, I've chamfered the edge of this so it'll be uh, for weld prep. See, there's no lorry coming now. I'm going to have to get really triggerly, particularly there at the edges. Anyway, what we're going to do now is offer this up because we want to put this at a bit of an angle. That's why actually it's not a tight fit. It's so I can do a little bit of wobbling. So let's get up to the engine. Well, I've done it again. I didn't charge up my spare battery. I've just swapped them over and the one I've put in has got next to no power. So we'll see what we can see. I might have to video a little bit with my phone. All right. So there that is on with a gasket on. So we're going to put that on there. Now I can't really angle this because if I do that, I'm not going to be able to get this one in. Where are we? In and out with that like that. So the best I can do is we'll get this. We're going to make it a little bit downdraft just to... Uh, level up the float ball although as I mentioned in a comment it's a concentric type float ball the uh, well actually the jets are a little to the back on this one so maybe we should try and get it so how long do I want it that's the first thing do you know I've got three six inch rollers and I can't find one of them that only wants to see what I'm looking at now is the clearance here So, we need to be able to get another. Now, I seem to remember the Victor Special had quite a thick alloy spacer there as well. Three quarters of an inch. Alright, I'm going to cut this to three quarters of an inch and then we'll just tack it into the thing. Right, now this face is angled slightly so. When that's on there, as you can see, we're not that far out. So what I'm going to do is just do this at a very slight angle so that I can put it in there and it'll be like that. Right, so let me do that before. Now I've got the little red symbol on the battery. Just to show you, I've set this up in the milling machine. There's a V-block holding it in and I've got it at about the angle I want. All right. There we go. That's nice and horizontal and we're going to come nicely, I think, into an air box here. So let me get this tapped. There it is welded in. I've drawn this around so let me go and cut this and shape it. There it is shaped and bolted on. I've got a piece of rubber tube cut so let me mount the carb. There we go. See that's a remarkably good solid mount. It's that tube it makes a good mount. All right we managed to squeak through with the battery and it's coming up to lunch time so I'll get one of them charged up. Right see you shortly. Right, well, we've had a bit of a jump in time because of a senior moment. And uh, that brightness you can see is I've got the door open because it's such a nice day. And it's Saturday, there shouldn't be any trucks. Anyway, any lorries. I hate saying trucks. Right. Well, when I went off to get my lunch on Thursday, I went up, I had my lunch, sat around, read the news, stuff like that. And then just as I was coming back up, I thought, Damn, I never brought the the battery up to the house with me, so consequently I didn't have it, a camera, so I couldn't do any work on Thursday afternoon. So, found a bit of rubber tube, which is 
slightly small. Actually, these I've found these really good. They're I don't think get them at home or elsewhere. They're plumbing fittings. They're a nice flexible rubber and they're made to you know couple water pipes and stuff together. For air, they're fine. Wouldn't use them here, but for air they're fine. And as I say, they're flexible so they'll even go around things. But as well as being able to get them to fit from say two inch to two inch, you can get them that will go two inch to one and a half inch and various sizes like that. So I'll go and check and probably be able to get one the exact right size that will just come out and slim slightly for our air box. If we can make an air box. So let me see if I can put this on here at the moment just to get some idea because I say it's a little, it's just fractionally small but it is pretty flexible get my finger inside to lift that up there we go all right so that'll just squeeze past this tube now then let me go and get uh, a quart of oil right now although i like my bikes to look like the era they came from. The one concession, or a couple of small concessions I make to uh, sort of modern riding techniques and so on, is to keep them as slim as I can here. So in here, without it sticking out too much, we've got to fit an air box and an oil tank. Now for an oil tank, uh, I want it to be about a quart, a litre of oil is enough. So there's a litre of oil. So we could fit that in about like that. You remember the Triumph one we did it, uh, we sloped it on the outside here. And that still gives a certain amount, but we have to make sure we have enough room for our mud guard. So let me go and find an old mud guard and we'll. Uh, fasten that in temporarily right so here we've got an 18 inch wheel in we've got our unit set at 14 inches our rear suspension unit so that's how it would sit normally and i've got an old mud guard so we can play around with this so what i'm going to do is take this off and i'm going to lower this six inches and that'll give me basically full bounce, full compression with these uh, suspension units I'm going to use with the rock shocks. So we'll take that off. Come on now, don't you? And we'll lower this six inches it's going to be good enough for work so that went up a little bit didn't it that was 28 so we'll take this down Should have turned you off while I did this. Now I'm catching on to this. Stay with me, people. That is near enough. So we are going to need this mud guard to be about there. That's close enough. Shows us how much space we've got, excuse me, in here. Hang on, let me move you around. So now it's showing us how much space we've got in here. Now, as I say, I don't want to come sticking out too much. I'm going to 
can a little bit. You can see how much is lost to the mud guard. All right. Now then, if we're going to have an air box, we need to have enough room. See, we could put. If I sort of split this space, actually, the air box doesn't have to be too big. I could make an air box that fitted, sort of nestled inside the oil tank. Because we're also going to have a filler. Got to be able to get it a filler. So really I need the oil tank to come right up to there. Hmm. I've got to get my chair and sit and look at this. So you go off and do something useful. Now I found out one high level pipe left. Chrome's not brilliant, so I wouldn't actually be using this, but that is roughly where the exhaust pipe would go. Now, I might try and dig up a picture off the internet. Uh, things like the AGS. They're just matchless singles and so on. They had an oil tank which actually sat on top of the crankcases here. Because they had a separate gearbox, they had big engine plates that came up and mounted the engine and then like a big hole in the engine plate where the gearbox was. And they would mount it up here. Now, those engines were wider than this is. But there's no reason why I couldn't have the oil tank go into there. I mean, it could even go down in between those plates down here. I've had some quick measurements actually, and if I make it go down there a little bit, and one here, a bit wider here, there's 800 and something cc's, and getting to where I want to be, I've got to be careful, of course, on that side of the chain, and that's why I put this on. I need to be inside the exhaust because, of course, the oil's not only got to lubricate the engine, but we need the oil to stay reasonably cool. It does cool the engine also. So we don't want it to be crammed in so that it gets hot. But, because I get really clever and make a two piece oil tank. One that went in there and then a tube <laughs> connected to this one. As long as I made the return come into the top here, it would. But the idea of sitting it down there, right down in between those tubes. But again, then it's right out of the airflow. But here it's not. Let me think some more. This is what I'm thinking. This bottom part here. <laughs> See, it's about that wide. So this bottom part here, right, is going to be a box. Like a triangular box. So it'll go in that way, fill up some space. This here, see this is, if you like, a cross-sectional area of it. This here is going to be just the same. It's going to go deep into there. And what I'm thinking of doing, I've got a piece of this, I'll use that as the back. So just like with the Triumph, I have the double curvature without having to make it. Then this is going to be... Hold on one second. Excuse me. Is going to be about just less than an inch wide there it's going to be about four inches wide here I can make it wider there so it'll sort of wrap around this and then here it'll come like it did with the Triumph from there it'll come back and follow this line so I just had a quick measure this bottom part will hold about 280 mil 
this top part should amply hold uh, over 700 so it'll give us our litre cc's I should say not millilitres let's keep ourselves at least the same nomenclature well and uh, that will work I think I mean I could actually make that go down in there not as wide but just fit it straight down into there I don't know whether that would give me a bigger volume but again it's getting into sort of dead air this way although we've got some heat coming from the cylinder I'm just gonna have a nice big flat side here we're going to keep it all in what little airflow there is on a trials bike because don't forget we're only going along at walking speed so as those who few who followed me for a while know I put the lie to Occam's razor but this is about the only way I can think and I still can't really think because you see now I've got plenty of room up here to make an air box that breathes through the top same as I did on the last end field but I don't know where I'm going to put my oil filler before anybody says down there that's no good because of course we want the whole of this to be filled so it's got to be up here I don't think the air box would be big enough for me to have a long filler neck that sort of came up through the air box gosh don't know so I've got to think about it some more but I think making it like that will give me the volume I need in the very restricted space I've got don't anybody mention I should have made it oil in frame and then I wouldn't have had this problem you know I don't like oil in frame all right let me think about it some more so Occam wins out been thinking and thinking and thinking about this there were so many shapes to make there that I've decided on this and this is only rough shape actually this would have sides on it so that will go in there like that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape it a little bit like that and bring it up here fill a cap on there the car still goes on you can't fit this with the carbon though but car goes on there so there's plenty of room as I say we'll shape this hang on pen just to make it nice we'll shape it like that and here we'll come up a little bit just so we can put our filler cap there we can put it to one side everything will be fine and then I've got as much room as I need to make my air box uh, this comes to over a litre so we're fine it goes down can you see oh yeah it goes down here so we can take our put our oil lines in there nice and easy that makes everything fine the exhaust will go on all right because don't forget this isn't the one we're actually going to use I'll make it come just a little bit out and we're fine on the other side for the chain nothing will catch anywhere yeah right I'll maybe make up this top piece just so that I I know what I'm doing but right now I'm gonna go and have actually leftover pizza from last night so yeah I think that's gonna work fine we've got lots of surface area to it it'll shed the heat all right not gonna get in the way of anything 
Yeah, that'll be all right. Well, I've had my slice of pizza and a mug of tea, and I've also had an all bollocks moment. I forgot about the clutch operating mechanism, which goes on there. See? That goes on there. Like thus. Come on. You can see how it goes. That won't locate. That locates in that hole down there. You know what? I don't think this is a B44 cover, although it was in the box. Anyway, that goes on there like that. So look, right there. That's where the cable comes in for that. So, we've got to have that little bit higher, not much, just a little bit to let the cable in. So, because if I thought of doing this before, I could have made these plates a different shape, but that's fine. So, huh. Uh, I'll have the little bit that goes down there. Yeah, you know, that's, that's not much because this, there's actually a gap there. See, I can get my finger under there because of the slope of this. I'm not actually following the slope. I'm cutting straight across. So there is that. You see, I can make this go up higher. Well, once I do that, you see, I'm starting to get a pinch on, impinge on that where I want the filler cap to go. But I can wrap it round here. I mean, I've, I've stopped there. I can make this come back here. See, like that. I haven't got any cardboard. Let me, let me make a little piece to put on there. All right, I think this is it, finally. Now I've actually shortened the bit that goes down there because this was difficult to get on. The piece I've cut off there to curve that, and it can be anything I want, I've put there. So the little bit of space I've lost there is taken up there. And this, as I say, well, I've, I've put this on a ruler, right? So now it's, it's clear of the cable. The cable will go on. That would be here. Now actually this main box is 10 by 10 by 10. So it's a litre less this little bit here. Now this little bit here doesn't go all the way through because don't forget I've got this piece going down here. So actually with that I've got my leader. This would be extra. So whether the simplest thing to do, rather than even make this to go around here, would just be to make that a little bit higher. Put the card back on. Actually the overflow, wherever it is, on this card, I've trapped underneath the thing so I can't take it right off. Where are we? That is going to go in there. Like thus. So it goes a little bit higher like that when it's... So we can... See I can make it a little higher at the top. See, making that go around there, actually, I have to say, I cut a little bit off the bit that goes down here because I have to put it in sort of at an angle to get it to drop in, to go in. 
as opposed to just putting it in and dropping it down. Although actually now I've cut that off, it probably without the carb on will go on easily enough. If I put a filler cap on there, well actually if I put a filler cap on there, the air box <laughs> don't think we'll get to cutting any aluminium this week because I want to what I do with the, when I've got my cardboard box is I cut through the reason it's all taped up is I cut the tape and then I can open it out flat and see the least number of pieces I have to make it out of with folds. See where I can do the folds because the less joints there are, the less chance of leaks. You know, the folds are much stronger. All right, let me continue to mull this over. So there is the final shape I've decided on. It will have the piece that goes down in between the plates. But what I've done is made it up so that I can, as I say, I'll cut this tape fold it flat and then we can cut some alloy oh by the way let me just hold on to your chairs any of you were going to comment that that carburetor line the float chamber line there float bowl whatever it's getting late you see wasn't level I noticed it wasn't level and I thought that's funny well not just funny it's annoying because I know I made this at the right angle well what it was was the rubber when I cut it I cut it at an angle <laughs> instead of being square it was a bit of an angle like that so it was forcing the carb down but I've done it now you see it's pressed up tight against that and it's horizontal okay so I know you fret about things like that so let me uh, I'm gonna work overtime for you we'll butterfly this sort of thing and then cut a piece of alloy right so here we have our dual purpose cardboard template you see I've opened it out and we can use this for cutting out gingerbread men so this is, uh, let's see, that's the two sides, that's the bottom, that's the piece that's going to curve over, that's the top and that's the bit that goes around there and these will actually come round. So hopefully, if everything works out right, we can, uh, we can just do a lot of bends and then of course I have to make the piece at the bottom that goes down in between the two engine plate so let me mark this out and take it over to the bandsaw right so there he is cut out with the correct bend lines on because I did them on the wrong side if I'd have bent it that way it wouldn't have come out right <laughs> so see this is the the front that's the sort of base part so that's going to come up then that bit's going to curve then that bit's going to go back towards the frame tube and they will have come up and they'll turn in that way just struck me what it reminds me of not a gingerbread man that big angel thing up in county durham for those of you who don't live in the uk uh i think it's called the angel of something perhaps somebody will put it in a comment and then you can look it up all right so how do i get to bend this can I put it in the bender? I could do that one and possibly do that one as well but then I wouldn't be able to get it in to do that one so that one will have to be done Ooh, which do we do first so we don't I might just bend Actually, I should have kneel it as well, shouldn't I? And then it'll bend easier. Let me uh, anneal it, which of course will get rid of all my lines, and then we'll see about which order to bend it in. 
think because of the height of this, I should be able to do both of these. I scored them actually so that they would... Uh... Yeah, over a little bit. Alright, fingers crossed. See, I don't have a, a guide on this, but we can, uh, there we go, that's fine. Right, now we'll go and put it on the table and I put a little block in there, we'll get that bent up. Right, I've got a block which is barely shorter, so we should be pretty good. That's clamped down good and tight. You know, I don't think these camera batteries are lasting as long as they used to. I think I got everything there, but I did hear it go click. All right, so there's the bottom done. Now we've got to curve this and then uh, get it into there. So how are we going to do that? We could do that maybe by clamping that down like thus. putting a nice big piece around. Let me see if I've got a piece of round stock that will do that. Well, we just dropped lucky there. Look, I picked one piece up and it was, I thought, oh, it'll be too long. And then I spotted this piece. And that is a pretty good curve. So let me clamp that down. And we'll uh, see if we can bend that round. Well that took a bit of clamping down, hopefully it's solid enough. See I've got it in the sort of the, the hook of the clamp, because other than that if I try to put it on the actual foot, it kept moving. coming round what I might have to do see is clamp it down weld it and then do the last little bit of, of bending it's very close I can see I can clamp it like that and tack it clamp it like that and tack it Tap it into the correct, sh tap it into its shape. I hope. I 
Anyway, it's getting close. See now, can you? I'm trying to get that last little bit there. Yeah, no, I want that to go that way. Oh, just need something underneath that. Hold on. See if I can do it with that. Wait. Oh, that's about it. Let's go and have a quick look at it on the bike and then after knock off. Alright, actually I think that looks quite good. I'll be just like that a little bit. And as I say, I'll have the piece that go down there. And now I can just put a filler cap on there, nice and easy, and all that will fill up. Very good. All right, that's it for this week, everybody. Uh, next week, I have a trial on Sunday, so you'll get the video Saturday evening. All right, so until then, it's, uh, stay safe and enjoy yourselves.